This episode of the Crack House Chronicles is brought to you by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. This is not a crisis line or a self-help line. It's professional counseling done securely online. Now, Dale, this is a broad range of expertise that is available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Yeah, this service is available for clients worldwide. Worldwide? Worldwide. Worldwide. And you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So you don't have to worry about sitting in an uncomfortable waiting room and waiting on a traditional therapist. Yeah, which is really good in this time. You don't really want to go and sit in the waiting room with a bunch of people with the stuff going on that's going on today. Sit there with a mask on and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's no good. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. And if you don't like your counselor, it's pretty easy to change. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. It's more affordable than traditional online counseling, and financial aid is available. That's always good. Right that's, a, that's awesome. Yeah. And BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. That's right. So visit their website and read the testimonials. They're posted there daily. All right, Dale. Visit BetterHelp dot com slash c h c that's better h e l p and you can join over one million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional that's right in fact so many people are using it now they're actually recruiting counselors in all 50 states so a special offer for our listeners you can get 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash c h c you got to use the code word betterhelp.com slash C H C. Killer will now spend the rest of his life behind bars. That's after Scott Williams pleaded guilty to three first degree murder charges. WCNC's Glenn Counts is live at six from our mobile newsroom in Union County tonight with more from one of the investigators who broke this case. Glenn. Well, Sonia, this is where Scott Williams spilled his horrible secret. Not only did he murder three women, he butchered them. It was a tough story to hear, even for a professional. This is the face of a monster, according to the family member of one of Scott Williams' victims. He's a, a unique individual. Uh, and I, I don't know what else to say other than that. It's, he's, he's like no one else I've ever met before. Sergeant Brian Helms of the Union County Sheriff's Department worked on this case. Williams pleaded guilty to killing Sharon Presley, Christina Parker, and Sharon Stone. Prior to today's plea deal, he confessed to Helms and several other investigators. To be friendly, and, and that's what we try to do here. Um, it, sometimes, it is like, sometimes it is like walking a tightrope, trying to keep somebody talking. The three women were allegedly prostitutes. Williams killed them and then sexually mutilated them. Details that turned the stomachs of the men who took that confession. Try to find a way to wash it off of you when you go home. Um, you know, we, we all, all of us, no matter what kind of case it is, we, we look to our family. The women lived a high-risk lifestyle, but the district attorney says that did not play a role in his decision to seek life without parole over the death penalty. What this plea offer allowed us to do was guarantee that this man would never be free again. One of the family members wanted to talk to us on camera, but a few of them told us that they would have preferred the death penalty, but they are satisfied that Williams will never be a free man again. Reporting live from our WCNC mobile newsroom in Union County, I'm Glenn Counts. Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to the Crack House Chronicles. I am Donnie, your host, and with me is a man who just ate a chicken bacon Swiss sandwich with fries like some freaking health nut. It's Dale. It was lean, lean protein. Lean chicken. This was a big damn sandwich. It was a big sandwich. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't eat it all. I tried. And thanks to Nanny's. Yeah, shout out to Nanny's, man. This was the best chicken sandwich ever. They got some good food, man. Mm-hmm. And you speaking of shout outs, them. you got any more? Sh- you got any shout outs for us today? Yeah, we'll give a shout out. We're gonna give a shout out to uh, Susan Cannon. Uh, she sent us an email and uh, left us some some kind words on her YouTube channel. Shout out to the YouTube channel. She had a friend. It was mentioned in. Uh, a previous episode we did on uh, Henry Lewis Wallace, the Taco Bell Strangler, who was a serial killer in Charlotte. And that's uh, episode 49, if you want to go back and check that out. 
But uh, her friend, Deborah Slaughter, was one of the victims in that, that episode. And uh, she said that she had actually uh, offered that girl a ride, you know, and probably the day before she was, she was killed. So we just want to give a shout-out to her and tell her, you know, we appreciate her emailing us and uh, rest in peace to your friend there, De- Deborah. Yeah, and we are so sorry for the loss of your friend, like Dale said. Mm, it's hard stuff. Can't imagine. All right, Dale. I uh, want to remind everybody to uh, check out our store page on our website, get you a T-shirt, mug. Also go to Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star five star, rating five star. and review. It really does help the cause. Yeah, shout-out to a few of you who left a couple stars, but we need a review or something. That's it. All right, man, we're going to get into our episode. Let's do it, man. All right. We have got a North Carolina serial killer. Captain mm-hmm. Crunch? No. Oh. Not serial, but serial. Oh, my bad. Yeah. And his name is Scott Wilson Williams, and he is from Monroe, North Carolina. Monroe. Just out the other side of Charlotte from us. Yep. Not far at all. No. And Scott Wilson Williams was born on December the 3rd, 1963. Yep. Which makes him 57 years old. 57. And he is convicted of three murders. Three. Yep. Yep. The span of... Nine years. Yeah, from uh, 97 to 2006. Yep. His first victim, her name was Sharon House Presley. Yep. And she was 37 from Charlotte, North Carolina. And she was killed in 1997. Yep. Uh, Christina Outs Parker, she was 34 from Monroe, North Carolina. And she was killed in 2004. And Sharon Tucker Stone, she was 46 from Monroe, North Carolina. And she was killed in 2006. Yep. And he had a couple other victims that managed to escape that he tried to sexually assault, but they weren't killed by him. Right. But they were later able to testify at his trial. Yep. All right. We're going to get into a little bit more about Scott Wilson Williams. There's not a ton on him, but we're going to do what we can. Yeah, there's not much on him, especially his younger life, his school, his parents. You know, where he lived. You know, he's from Monroe, North Carolina. Yeah, he's in jail not far from here. No, just a couple, about well, about an hour and a half away. Yeah. In Taylorsville. North Spoiler North alert. <laughs> yeah, Taylorsville, North Carolina. He's yeah. in prison up there. Uh, Scott had a job, you know, before all this took place with the, the North Carolina Department of Transportation. And he got a yellow truck that he would drive around and, I guess, do maintenance work. Yeah, or whatever they do. Whatever they need to do, put out cones or... Whatever he done. Pick up trash. Yeah, yeah. NZDOT does a whole lot of stuff. They do a lot of things. Yeah. And this job would put him in a vehicle that would not be easily noticed. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you could uh, easily pull over on the side of the road or go up dirt roads or in the woods or, or really wherever he'd really want to go because it's just common to see him almost anywhere. You think about how often you see a DOT truck on the side of the road. Yeah, and 10 people standing there with shovels and one working. And you don't think nothing about it. <laughs> no, you don't. No, I mean, you don't because that's just a normal thing. So it it really give him a good chance to ride around. and It'd give him a good cover. Exactly. Yep. Scott Wilson Williams, he was charged in 2006 with the murders of these three women in North and South Carolina, and he entered an Alfred plea deal what does that mean Donnie? now alfred plea deal is a guilty plea in criminal court whereby a defendant in a criminal case does not admit to the criminal act and asserts their innocence so basically saying he knew that they had enough to convict him and he's like okay you got me but i'm not gonna say i'm guilty exactly <laughs> okay. yeah the defendant admits like you said the evidence presented by the prosecution but would likely persuade a judge or jury to find him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm. Now, Alfred plea deals are legally permissible in nearly all 50 states, but not allowed in state courts in Indiana, Michigan, and New Jersey, or in the courts of the United States Armed Forces. Hmm. So, And it actually got his name from a, a, a plea that was right here in North Carolina in 1970. Got a little bit of home base right here for us, his plea deal. So that's where it originated here? Yeah, in North Carolina. Hmm. So, yeah, a little bit of background on that. That's cool. All right, now, uh, Williams, he was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and kidnapping and the deaths of Sharon Tucker Stone, Christina Parker, and Sharon Presley. Now, Stone's body was found in Chesterfield, South Carolina. Yeah, that's when a guy was picking up cans, right? Yeah, he was yeah. picking up cans on the side of the road and just spotted her body. Right. 
And Presley's, her body was found in 1997. And the, actually, Parker and Presley's bodies were found in the same area of northern Union County, which was about 10 miles from Williams' home. So he's like the laziest serial killer ever. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he's not putting a whole lot of effort into this. But now his his murders grew in severity. Right. You know, when he killed one, the next one would be worse. Right. Well, I wonder, you know, cause that first one was in 97 and the next one was only, it was in 2004. It took him a while to regroup, you think, or either that or is a lot we don't know about. Mm-hmm. Could be either way, I guess. But now, it was reported on March the 15th, 2006, that mutilations to the bodies of the three women were killed by the same person during the nine year span with more severe each time hmm. and the autopsies that they had proved this and criminal justice experts say that this fits the pattern of a serial killer who got bolder over time and even demonstrated efforts to satisfy a compulsion caused by early trauma now, talking about a little bit of early trauma for Scott, he sued a hairdresser of his that he claimed sexually abused him from the time he was eight years old. The case was settled out of court. Mm. So he, he got something for it, but the, the guy that he accused never admitted to the sexual assault. Oh, wow. So I don't know, I don't know if Scott had some more sexual assault as a young child, and this later... Led, led to his violent killings. His warpedness. Yeah, he was pretty warped. Yeah. Sheriff Eddie Cathy, he avoided describing Scott Williams as a serial killer. He said the victims were taken for the purpose of murder. They were taken, and then murder was the result. But he wouldn't elaborate beyond that. And I don't understand why he's, he's saying that, because... That don't make sense. I mean, they were taken for his pleasure, I guess, and then murdered him. Because that's that's what most of them do. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, they take these women because these three women, they all three of them had been reported that they had a risque lifestyle. Well, it, it's kind of weird because it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we've done cases on lots of people, lots of weird people here and there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, whether they killed them and then did to them what they wanted to do to them or they did to them and then killed them, it doesn't matter. They're still dead either way. So it's still, to me, three or more is serial killer. So you're saying it doesn't matter at which point he kills them. Yeah. If he kills them before he does something to them or kills them after. Yeah. They're they're still being killed. It, true that. Yeah, so I don't think this... So I still think that means serial killer. It doesn't mean, you know, I mean, what the hell is the difference? It doesn't... It doesn't Make it any less, does it? No, not to me. It doesn't to me either. So I don't understand why this Sheriff Eddie Cathy, you know, avoided describing him as a serial killer. No, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Maybe he just didn't want to say that in his county. Could be. Try to keep that, you know. But all three women were shot to death before they were mutilated. And this was according to the autopsy reports. Right. And there's not much more detail than that. Mm -mm. But the first woman was sexually mutilated, and the second victim's mutilations and sexual and non-sexual were more, were more numerous, as the autopsy show. And in the third instant, uh, who was stoned, she was decapitated and dismembered, according to authorities. Ooh. Yeah, so, so he stepped it way up. It, 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 grew, it grew in escalation. And authorities did say that all three women lived a high-risk lifestyle and that Scott Williams was a part of it. I wonder what that means. I don't know, unless they were prostitutes or they had a drug addiction problem or something. Sex worker. Could have been. Paul Friday, he's a UNC Charlotte criminology professor, and he said serial killers typically have revenge fantasies caused by a significant shock in their life. And he said fantasies get more violent over time, and at some point, the opportunity and the fantasy come together and the killings occur. Well, he's dead on about that. Yeah, exactly. He said the first mutilation satisfies them, but they, then they have to escalate because they need more satisfaction and then more and more. So it's like a, an addict, you think? Yeah. More or less. Mm-hmm. Now, on April 20th, 2006, Union County Sheriff's investigators detailed everything they took from Williams' home in the following days of, on his arrest on March 9th. And they found a variety of weapons, including knives, guns. They also took handcuffs, hair samples, and computer equipment. And I'd even read in one place he has said he had a Barbie doll collection, which was kind of kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. 
they even took uh, uh, blood samples, hair, and saliva samples from Williams. And when he was arrested, when they went to his home, he was sitting on the couch watching TV and put his hands over his head and said, I didn't mean to kill those girls. So they pretty much had him. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Now, the evidence against Scott Williams included DNA, ballistics from weapons found on his property, detectives said, and investigators also read statements by Williams and two more victims who survived, which show the 44-year-old picking up women, torturing, and killing them. They also portrayed Scott Williams as a fetishist and a predator who was insecure in his sexuality and quick to anger. Hmm. And Scott Williams' attorney, Frank Wells, who was from Ashbury, he said in his defense they didn't have any grounds on which to dispute the statements that were read in court. Right. So he really, they didn't have, he, he couldn't, they had him dead right. Yeah. Yeah. He said it wasn't even a close call, said the evidence was overwhelming. Yeah, he was not good at this. No. Superior Court Judge Richard Boner handed Williams three consecutive life sentences. They involved the deaths of Sharon House Presley in 1997, Christina Outs Parker in 2004, and Sharon Tucker Stone in 2006. Their bodies, mutilated in similar but increasingly gruesome ways, were found on rural roads in Union County and Chesterfield, South Carolina. And they also said this serial murder case has been one of the most gruesome in the Charlotte area in recent years. So I wonder, you know, just by jumping in here, it says in recent years, so what was the top before this? You know, I don't know. You know, Henry Lewis Wallace was pretty rough. Yeah. The one we mentioned at the beginning of this episode. That's true. And then, you know, then you got the, we talked about the Gaffney Strangler. Yeah. Which was years before this. Yeah, it was down the road, but it's not in Charlotte. No, but it's it's close by. Yeah, they, they said that in this area. Charlotte area. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I didn't mean to get No, no you're fine. I just, <laughs> you know, it makes me wonder, you know. Is there something we miss is what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, somebody. Yeah. But we are always investigating other cases. Yeah. We like local. Mm-hmm. Now, it's reported that Scott Williams walked into the courtroom during his trial. He was tireless and wearing a gray suit. He was shackled at the wrist and... All he did was just answer yes or no questions to the judge. He didn't show any emotion, Dale. And his hair was buzzed. He had the same thick, dark mustache and wire frame glasses. Hmm. But now you can look at his photograph online. He don't have that mustache anymore. No. He's, 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 aged, he's Bud Melvin now. <laughs> he's aged quite a bit yeah. since uh, his arrest. And it had been even reported some of the mutilations to some of his victims. This is according to Union County Sheriff's uh, Lieutenant David Lento, he said one survivor even told investigators that Scott Williams removed her shoelaces, wrapped them around her breast, tightened them until they turned blue. Damn. And he said, well, he told her that, quote, I was your worst nightmare. I'm your guardian angel. If anyone messes with you, I will kill them. Unquote. The women told detectives. That's crazy. Yeah. So I wonder, did he let her go? I guess he did. It doesn't really say. I mean, it would say, you know, when he got away. Yeah. But, man. According to the testimony of Scott Williams, he told investigators that he planned to cannibalize one of the women's remains, but it actually was turned off by the smell of cooking flesh. God dang. That would almost have to be Sharon Stone when he's the only one that received really well. I don't know. That's the one he dismembered. I don't know. If, yeah. I guess it really doesn't matter. No. That's pretty, that's out there. Yep. One of the survivors who testified in court, who at the time was in her 40s, held up a photograph of herself taken shortly before her 1995 abduction from the parking lot of a 24-hour supermarket and where she was almost raped. It showed a smiling woman with curly brown hair. She described herself as very vivacious and full of life. She was once married and had a beautiful child, but she spoke in a slow, soft, monotone voice. So... Yeah, and said that uh, she was really lucky to survive, but mentally and emotionally, I'm constantly looking over my shoulders. Well, I have no doubt. And, you know, that was even before he killed his first, uh, Sharon Presley. Yeah. So she could have been one. She could have been. So I guess, you know, after her, it escalated into murder. Right. So, evidently, Scott Wilson Williams was convicted to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. And he is currently... Imprisoned at the Alexander Correctional Center 
here in North Carolina. Yep, Taylorsville. So that is pretty much all we have on Scott Wilson Williams. And if anybody else has any more on him, please share it with us. Tell us what you know, and we might have you on the show. Yeah, we'll do an update. We'd love to know more about this guy. Yeah. Some of his past life and stuff. Yeah, because we looked hard and, low, you know, it's pretty crazy. Yep. All right, Dale, we're going to get out of here. Yeah, that is it. Uh, so it's kind of a short episode today, but it's one we didn't, we couldn't find a ton of information on, but I still thought it was one we needed to do. Yep. So uh, it's, only, it's something for you to listen to. All right. <laughs> we want everyone to be safe, be careful, and always be aware of your surroundings. Because the next episode could be about you. This is the Crack, Crack House, House Chronicles. Chronicles.